Hey guys, Professor Toby here. We're here to talk about reciprocal inhibition, or RI stretching. Uh, this one gets confusing for a lot of people because it's kind of counterintuitive on how you think it would help. But the main point of this is not the actual stretch that we're doing it, it's confusing the mind uh, via giving an opposite reaction. And what I mean by that is with PNF stretching, we're trying to target uh, the tight muscle. So in our classic hamstring example, hamstrings and the myofascial chain all the way through the lower leg into the foot, uh, that's going to be stretched by having them stretch up their feet towards their head. So with reciprocal inhibition, if the hamstrings are tight, what we're going to do is inhibit that contraction of the hamstrings by a reciprocal action, meaning the opposite of the hamstrings. And the opposite muscle is what you have to really know for RI to work. So this can be done, again, anywhere on the body. However, let's do a review. With hamstrings, the opposite would be the quads. With the biceps, it would be the triceps that we're going to be activating. Over here on the right SCM and the scalenes and we have traps and all that other fun stuff on the right hand side, if that's tight, we want to inhibit it by making left do some work instead of making that tight muscle do work. So how do we put this into action? Well, normally with PNF stretching, the one that everybody's familiar with, we would have them stretch to their full, that's about her, her resistance level right there, and then we would have her contract down. Well, instead, these are the tight muscle groups that we're trying to focus right now, we're going to make the opposite do some work. And in order for this to do the opposite work, instead of down, it's the opposite, up. So making her knee and her foot go to her face instead of through the table, okay? So Christy, what we're going to do is reciprocal inhibition stretching, it's just RI stretching. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to find your max range of motion and try to focus on these hamstrings here. What I'm going to have you do is I want you to bring your foot and your entire leg all the way up towards your face. So you're going to activate these hip flexors and these quad muscles. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, right on. Now that, again, that your client knows exactly what they're supposed to be doing, go ahead and explain it a little bit further. So, Christy, what we're going to do is you're only going to use about 10% or so of your energy. Uh, and with this area, especially of the body, it's really difficult because these guys, unless you're a really tip-top athlete, they don't really like to flex in the direction that we're going to make them, so it's going to activate or deactivate these real quick. All right, so again, we're only going to use 10% of your energy. You're going to end up pulling this area right up towards your shoulder or your face, okay? Yes. Karate kick to the face, right? So what I'm going to do is find this end range motion, and again, her knee starts popping, boom, right about there. So I want to just back off just slightly, give the muscle some room to work. I am again going to stabilize behind, and instead of her pushing through, I have to make sure that I brace on the opposite side. So I just hold right here in kind of a cross arm formation. And Christy, do you understand what's happening? Yes. Wonderful. So I'm going to have you take a nice deep, actually we'll do that so we can see. Nice deep breath in. On the exhale, go ahead and bring your foot to your face. Yeah, pulling right against. And she's trying and trying to pull. She's going to keep pulling, keep breathing. Make sure that we keep them breathing. We got another six, five, four, three, keep, keep pulling on, keep pulling, there we go. All right, next deep inhale, on the exhale, I want you to go ahead and relax. There it is. We can push her a little bit further, all right? So right about there is where her knee will start popping. So right here, if we wanted to try again, we would do it again. So here, new range of motion, are you comfortable with that? Yes. Wonderful. Nice deep breath in again. On the exhale, go ahead and bring the foot to the face one more time. Yeah, and really try to push with your knee as well, or pull, I should say, from your, your angle. You got another eight seconds. Keep breathing, keep pulling, keep pulling. Five, four, three, two. Deep inhale for me. On the exhale, just need you to relax. And she relaxes, everything goes down, and we push just a little bit further. Boom. So that's quite a bit of improvement just for her using the opposite side. And when we feel them, yeah, they're going to be really tight because they're still in tensile contraction right now. But when we loosen back down, that's way different tonus than it was before. So reciprocal inhibition plays another very fancy role in that if they can't use that already contracted and tight muscle, 
we can use the opposite and get a really good effect out of that area without injuring our clients.